Hello and welcome to the channel if it's your first time here. It is 7.30 in the morning here in Mazari Sharif and today I am very very excited to be exploring the ancient city of Balkh. But of course first things first we have to get energized, we have to eat some breakfast and my hosts have suggested that we eat kebabs for breakfast. If there's one thing that sums up Afghanistan, it's going to be the sentence kebabs for breakfast. You cannot escape eating meat here. So let's go. And we wanted kebabs, man. This place looks pretty good for them. Wow, check these out. All different types of kebabs, sort of fresh there. Yeah, these look amazing. Assalamu alaikum. And this amazing sort of fresh charcoal grill, you can tell this is going to give the most amazing flavor on that meat. And in Mazar and other parts of northern Afghanistan, they've got these special sort of breads that I haven't seen anywhere else in the country, but they're sort of a little bit more dense and a little bit sort of uh, more pillowy than other breads than the traditional Afghani naan. They're smaller and round. <laughs> That's the best breakfast kebab I've ever had. It's so flavorful. There's a bunch of green chili in there, but it's not really spicy. You can just taste like a really nice chili flavor. It's so flavorful. There's a bunch of green chili in there, but it's not really spicy. It's just like a really nice sort of chili flavor. And yeah, that bread actually is a little bit sweeter than the normal Afghani naan. And of course, the after breakfast tea. There is not a place in Afghanistan you can go to without having tea violently forced upon you. You'll say no to tea, they'll pour you a cup anyway. So you can just sit back and enjoy it. Cheers. And we've just taken this side road out from a little village here. And sort of right in the middle of nowhere, we've come across this right at the end of this dirt track here. And behind this awesome old ornate gate, check this out. In Pashto gate is Darwaza and this is sort of made of wood. You can tell this has been here for a long time. It's as solid as. So welcome to the shrine of Haji Paida Baba. And unfortunately the whole site sort of closed off by this chain link fence here. Um, from the looks of things, there's some reconstruction work going on. Um, but I think that's probably been paused since the new government took power, which is unfortunate. And the details that accent these old columns are really awesome. Like you can see the intricate sort of hand etching that's going on on the top of here. It almost looks like something from uh, like ancient Rome or ancient Greece. And then just around this corner here is the tomb, the grave of Haji Pada Baba the uh, gentleman for whom this shrine was built. Um, I don't know any information about him, unfortunately, but he... Yeah, it's such a shame that all of this is blocked off, man. Like, I'd love to go in there and get a closer look at some of those columns, some of the detail and the brickwork and stuff like that. And Bolch, it seems, is just filled with ancient stuff. Like, off to another side road here, we've just come across this. I don't know what this place is or what it used to be, but like, I don't know, I guess it was an old home or an old castle or something. And it's in pretty rough shape, it seems to be falling apart as you can see. But like the other place that we saw, this one's actually protected as well. They've sort of put this big roof over the top of it, I suppose to prevent it from eroding further in the elements. But on this part above me, you can still sort of see the original structure of this place, like this would have been a big dome. And you can actually still see quite a good portion of the original brickwork as well that's remained intact, and this sort of arch here. I am really the only person here at the moment, like my only company are these goats and sheep. Oh. And in Afghanistan, the goats are free actually, you can just take them, so let's go. Man, this place we're pulling up to now looks incredible. Wow, man. This place is gorgeous. Check out the detail. They've sort of carved like a giant spiral all the way up to the top of this minaret. I've seen a bunch of mosques in Afghanistan like this in a sort of similar style, that sort of turquoise acmarine tiling, but I've never seen a dome on one quite like this. Have a look. 
Yeah, the dome on this place is really something special. It's actually in really good condition, better condition than the rest of the mosque actually. This sort of section kind of rippled effect on the outside is absolutely amazing. And again, we've been to a bunch of mosques in Afghanistan, but I've never actually seen tiling done quite like it is on this one either. I guess it goes to show the really rich sort of regional variations and sort of subtle differences that exist between regions um, in like architectural styles in Afghanistan. I think it's actually the calligraphy that these tiles write out that I'm noticing is a little bit different. Like these ones are a little bit more elongated, a little bit more stylized. They almost look 8-bit in a way. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. These tiles actually look a little bit older and they're fading a touch more compared to the other places we've been, but still the colour on them is so, so rich. And if you view this place from a wider angle, it's pretty clear that it is falling apart slowly. Um, its condition isn't the best. You can see the tiles down the sides of the mosque have come off to quite an extent. And check out these sort of side balconies that are on either side of the mosque too. These are actually in pretty good shape. 